Good afternoon, good evening or good morning to everybody joining us from around the world. My name is Pippa Horton and I'm a communications officer here at the World Health Organization. Today we're here to talk about uh, food safety. This Sunday, the 7th of June, is World Food Safety Day. And joining me today here, I have from the headquarters of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in Rome, Dr. Sarah Cahill, who is the Senior Food Standards Officer at Codex Alimentarius. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Peppa, and lovely to be with you this afternoon. And later in the show, I will be joined uh, here at WHO headquarters by Dr. Francesco Branca, who's with me, the director of WHO's Nutrition and Food Safety Department. Welcome, Dr. Francesco. Today we'll be discussing food safety from farm to table with a particular focus on safe markets. So jump into the comments section on any of the platforms that you're watching this on and tell us where you're from and ask us your questions. But first, we'll have a few quick words from WHO's Director Gen General, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. Uh, take it away, Dr. Tedros. Good, nutritious, Good. safe food nutritious. is one of... Every year, unsafe food is responsible for thousands of deaths. All of these deaths are preventable. This year's World Food Safety Day is a reminder that we can all play a role in making food safer. From the time food is grown and transported to when people are shopping and preparing meals, each of this is a chance to prioritize food safety. On the 7th of June, we recognize the people on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic who ensure that we can continue to access safe food. This year, we're particularly emphasizing access to safe and healthy food in markets. But food safety should not be an issue that's prioritized only once a year. Food safety is everyone's business, every day. In times of crisis, it's more important than ever. Please join me and our colleagues at WHO and FAO as we work together to ensure safe food for all. So we're going to start by talking a little bit about food production and particularly food safety and food production. Send us through your questions. On Twitter, you can use the hashtag AskWHO and on all the other platforms, you can just ask in the comments section. Uh, Sarah, I'll come back to you now and ask, can you tell us a little bit about what World Food Safety Day is, and why do we celebrate it? Sure, Peppa. Um, World Food Safety Day is basically an international day recognized by the United Nations where we could really put a focus and spotlight on food safety. Now, we just heard from the WHO Director General that food safety is important every day, but in order to make sure that that actually happens, World Food Safety Day helps us to really build awareness of the importance of food safety and ensure that everybody knows what their role is in terms of making food safe. Because we all need to care about safe food. I mean, we just have to look at some of the statistics related to unsafe food. Up to one in 10 of us actually get sick every year due to unsafe food. Almost half a million people die every year due to unsafe food. And nearly 40% of the burden of foodborne disease is in young children. And it's not just the health impact, it's also the economic impact. And for example, in low and middle income countries, a recent report has indicated that unsafe food results in a losses of up to 95 billion annually. So there's really good reasons why we need to make sure our food is safe. And finally, we know that food safety is very important for food security. And as we work towards achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030, we need to ensure that food safety and safe food for everyone is part of the effort. Can you tell us, tell our viewers, what does food production involve and why is food safety an issue during these production phases? So food production really is a chain of events. It starts on the farm or, or even be before the farm because some of the inputs to food production and animal rearing, such as animal feed, also contribute to the safety of food. So we have to look at what happens on the farm, what happens after that in terms of harvesting, what happens then in terms of processing and transformation of crops or animals and animal products into the food we eat today. 
and then the transportation and retail sectors. So at all of those points, there's an opportunity for our food to be contaminated and therefore become unsafe. So this is why it's really important to take a look at every step in the food chain and see what can be done, because the safety of our food is really only as good as the weakest link in that chain. Now, obviously, food producers play quite a big role in this. Uh, so can you tell us how can food producers keep our food safe? Food producers, particularly those at the, the farm level, have a very important role to play. And many of these revolve around good practices. Basically, it's ensuring that you keep hazards or contaminants out of our food, or if that's not possible, to making sure that those contaminants stay at as low a level as possible. So whether you're um, growing crops or rearing animals, good hygiene and good biosecurity are very important. Good husbandry practices and good veterinary practices. And also good environmental waste management so that you're producing food or growing food in an environment which minimizes the possibility for that food to be contaminated. Then as we move from the farm through harvesting and onto processing, each step has a, some key actions that need to be taken. We need to, for example, make sure that the food remains clean, that we're using water that's safe, that we're um, implementing good hygiene and that all the workers involved are aware of the role they play and um, are practicing good personal hygiene, but also keeping the environment in which we produce food safe. And we have lots of tools to help us do that. Good hygiene practices are, are well documented and they're relatively simple, but they need to be implemented consistently to be effective. We also have a system called HACCP, which was actually developed by um, to keep food safe when astronauts went into space. And now this is really one of the fundamental tools that we use to keep food safe during production and processing. It allows us to identify weak points in the food chain and what measures we can take then to control contamination or prevent contamination or even reduce contamination at that point. So these are just some of the things that can be done throughout the food chain to keep our food safe. Fantastic. So we have a few questions coming in uh, from our different platforms online now, but before we go to those, we're going to show a short video just to paint a picture of why producers are so important in bringing safe and healthy food from the farm to our plates. Sarah, we have a question that's come in from one of our LinkedIn viewers who asks, what are some of the changes in food safety management uh, that are happening with the new COVID measures? So what are some of the things that, that might be changing around food production or transportation or, or all of those stages that you mentioned earlier in the show? Yeah, thanks, Peppa. Um, well, of course, this pandemic has been really challenging for food producers because basically, they're at the front line of making sure that while many of us are in lockdown, we continue to have access to safe and nutritious food. And um, while we have absolutely no evidence that COVID-19 can be transmitted by food, those people working in food production still need to ensure that they're taking every measure to prevent contamination of food from any of the potential hazards that can affect food. So this means that they have to continue and reinforce good hygiene practices. There are also challenges because their workforce may be um, becoming ill and they may have less people to carry out the same amount of work. So they want to take measures to protect their workforce and, and this involves implementing measures such as physical distancing, in some cases use of uh, personal protective equipment and of course reinforcing personal hygiene. And some of the other challenges then the food industry has had to face is due to disruptions in transportation or due to um, you know, laboratories being redeployed for testing for COVID rather than for food safety hazards. And so they've had to readjust their food safety management practices to try and still maintain a safe food supply.
supply while also um, addressing the, the, the new context of a new environment we're living in. We have another question that's come through Facebook for us. How can you reduce the use of pesticides in food production and farming? Yeah, the, the use of pesticides and of course any chemical contaminants in, in food production is a concern for many people. But at the same time, in, they're, they're necessary in many places because we still have to maintain um, a food supply to feed a growing population. But we have a lot of measures we can take, particularly when it comes to plant production and the use of um, tools like integrated pest management, which ensures that we are applying the best crop production methods possible to minimize the potential impact of pests. And then if we do need to use pesticides, that we're using them in the best possible way and as little as possible to, to protect the crop. And the Codex Alimentarius, which is the international food standards law or food standards regulations um, that can be adapted by countries, have established a number of maximum residue limits for pesticide residues. And by adhering to these, we can ensure that the food is safe, even if pesticides have had to be used during the food production cycle. Sarah, we talked a little bit about food production. What about transporting the food? You did mention that. When food's being transported, for example, to our markets, um, what are the risks involved there? Are there any risks? Yeah, transportation is, is a key step. And Pippa, now, you know, food trade makes up about 10% of the total amount of goods traded globally. This means that there is a lot of transportation involved in terms of getting food from the point of production to populations. And considering more than half our populations now live in urban areas, um, this is really a, a challenging area for many. And um, there's a few key things. Some of the foods we produce, like um, meat or milk or dairy products, for example, are perishable foods. This means we need to be able to control the temperature of these products as they move from one location to another. And this can be a challenge for many countries, particularly when they maybe don't have the technology or the resources to maintain that temperature control or cold chain, as we call it, to protect the food. Even with some other foods like dried foods that we think are pretty stable, you know, we need to protect them um, from humidity, from, from environmental contamination. So, for example, grains, um, which are really important, are, are basic uh, crops in many countries. If these crops are not kept dry and if, if there's moisture, there's the potential for molds to grow them, which can then produce toxins, which can then end up in, this, in the cereal or the product that the consumers are, are eating. So keeping food in dry conditions, low humidity during storage, and transportation is really important to protect the consumers. And generally, we need to protect food from the um, potential for environmental contamination. So um, it, they could be moving through highly industrialized areas, there could be contaminants in the air. So basically protecting the food, using packaging or other means can be important. And then of course, with our packaging, we need to be sure that that packaging is safe to be in contact with food, and it does the job it's supposed to do, protect the food and not contribute to more contamination of the food. Thank you, Sarah. There's another question come in here through LinkedIn uh, that asks, what are your thoughts about income inequality between farmers and processors, especially in developing countries? So um, for developing countries, one of the great challenges is um, that, uh, oops, sorry, I lost, my, I lost my microphone for a moment. Um, in terms of farmers and processors, I mean, one of the great challenges for, for farmers is to produce food at a sufficient level that it can be safe for the consumer and that they can market, they can access markets. So um, this is a particular area of engagement for FAO where they're working with many farmers in developing countries to build up their skills and build up their the infrastructure around them that enables them to produce food of a higher quality and enable them to access markets and, and therefore access um, greater incomes and improve their, their livelihoods. And um, it's only through continuous working and support to, I think, pro to primary producers and farmers in particular, that we will be able to ensure that they get, um, they're producing a valuable product and they're getting rewarded accordingly for that. Another great question here that's come in, Sarah, from LinkedIn. Someone asks, would you encourage people to grow their own vegetables at home? 
So I think um, as consumers become more concerned about food safety, if people have the opportunity to grow food at home, um, that's, that's wonderful. And um, it can be a very rewarding experience, I think, to, to grow your own food. And also to help you appreciate the challenges that there are facing, facing farmers around the world in growing food. I grow my own vegetables at home. And, and some days I really, under, I really think it must be a difficult job to actually earn your living from this because it takes a lot of work. But if you do grow them at home, it's also important to be aware of some of the simple food safety um, measures that you need to take so that you're using um, you know, safe water when you're irrigating your foods, particularly foods like salads that you're going to consume raw, that your um, whatever fertilizer or manure or compost you use has been composted appropriately and therefore it does not add more contamination to your food. So, and, and if you are using um, chemicals in your food to really follow the instructions and use them as directed and, and not, not as you think they should be used because the directions are there to ensure that they're used appropriately and minimize the risk to consumers. So yes, certainly people should be willing to try out growing, but remember food safety is very important when you're also growing your own food. Thanks, Sarah. We've talked a little bit about uh, all of the different stages of uh, keeping food safe along the chain. What can governments do to help make sure that their people have access to safe food? Yeah, but governments have a really important role to play in, in food safety because ultimately they're the ones who can ensure that what operators or food businesses are doing is actually adequate to ensure that the consumers are getting safe food. This means that a government needs to have a strong food control system. And for many countries, this is still a challenge. And, um, they're still working towards having the appropriate infrastructure, not only to establish regulations for food, but then to implement them and help food businesses and food producers to know what they're supposed to do. So the governments essentially have a role to determine what is needed to ensure the population are, are safe or are getting safe food, that the producers are aware of what they need to do in order to implement those measures or achieve that level of food safety that they have the infrastructure around them to actually do that, and then to provide the oversight to make sure they're, they're doing that. And they can also play a role in bringing together the different players along the food chain and the different sectors, and making sure that everybody is aware of the importance of food safety. Whether you're working on nutrition policy, veterinary public health, food safety has a role to play, and it's important that all of those players are aware of that. And this is where the government can be very active and promote food safety and ensure it gets the attention and investment it deserves. Thanks so much, Sarah. We're now going to move on and talk a little bit about the side of food safety that might be a little bit closer to home for some of you out there. We're going to discuss uh, the role of vendors and also the role of you as consumers in food safety. So thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. Good to be with you today. And if you have any more questions for Sarah on the production side, please send them through in your comments and our ex experts will do their best to, to answer the questions after this show. Now, before I introduce our next expert, we're going to hear some words from the World Food Safety, uh, on World Food Safety Day, sorry, from the FAO's Director General, Xu Dongyu. Dear producers, Dear consumers producers. and the friend, we all need a safe, nutritious, accessible and affordable food. Food security and food safety are basic rights of a human being. Our food must be produced in the clean environment and travel along every supply chain, no matter how long or complex. At every step of the way, people are working to keep food safe. This is why here at FAO, we believe that food safety is everyone's business. I would like to acknowledge all the people who are working tirelessly in the challenging conditions of COVID-19 pandemic to keep our food safe. They are our true food heroes. Join me in thanks them as we observe this second World Food Safety Day. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you've just tuned in, we're discussing food safety from farm to table. And I'm joined now by WHO Director Francesco Branca, Dr. Francesco Branca, from the WHO Nutrition and Food Safety Department. Welcome, Francesco. Good afternoon, people. 
Um, please, everybody out there, send us through your questions, whatever you would like to know about food safety, about your vendors, the markets you visit, the foods you eat. You can use the hashtag AskWHO on Twitter, or you can ask in the comments section on our other platforms. So, Francesco, to start with, can you tell our viewers why food safety is something that they should be aware of? One in 10 people every year falls ill eating contaminated food. That adds, adds up to about 600 million people. And 420,000 die as a result of foodborne disease. A lot of them because of diarrheal diseases. And out of that, 125,000 children under five. That can totally be prevented. Uh, um, food, uh, unsafe food compounds with uh, poor nutrition and food insecurity. If, if you don't have safe food, you can't really be well nourished. But also, there's a problem of trade. We all buy food, and we would not buy food which we do not trust because we believe it's going to give us some uh, disease. So if food safety and safe food is, is uh, 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 basic things for our own health, well-being, and society. We already have questions streaming in online, which is fantastic. The first question I'd like to ask you from our viewers uh, from LinkedIn is, what can consumers do to ensure that the food they put on their plates are safe? Are there any instructions or tips that are available or have been developed? Oh, yes. We have what we call the five keys to safe foods. Uh, and there are basic things that we can do every day. First of all, of course, hygiene. Wash. Wash your hands. Wash the, food, the surfaces. Wash your products, the fruit and vegetables you eat, particularly if you eat them raw. Then separate the raw from the cooked when you prepare food, when you store food. Then third, uh, you, you have to uh, cook food thoroughly at the right temperature. If, if, if certain foods, uh, particularly animal foods, has to be heat at least at 70 degrees to uh, kill all uh, bacteria and viruses. Then we have to store food properly, you know, at uh, the right temperature, whether it has to be cold and then uh, particularly perishable food needs to be stored in the refrigerator to less than five degrees of temperature. Uh, we need to, of course, uh, look at the expiry dates of food. And then we need to use uh, the uh, right uh, materials. We need to make sure that uh, um, food uh, is uh, uh, coming from, um, uh, from, from vendors that uh, also ensure that hygiene. And of course, we need to uh, look at what we eat. So it's not just what uh, uh, we prepare at home, but what we uh, eat uh, uh, from uh, uh, markets, uh, uh, street food vendors. Uh, we, again, there need to make sure that uh, hygiene is preserved, uh, that uh, safe water is there, that uh, the separation of the uh, raw and cooked uh, is there. So, so we can ourselves uh, certainly have an eye of, of what we put in our mouth. Francesco, you mentioned markets, and this year for World Food Safety Day, we do have a particular focus on markets. Can you tell me what are the elements that make up a healthy market? Well, first of all, uh, markets are great, and uh, they are a big source uh, of food uh, for many people in the world, and probably the only source of food for certain uh, countries, like low-income countries. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, eggs, milk, fish, meat we eat, eat is, is bought there. Of course, these this markets must offer us safe and healthy foods. So how can we make sure that uh, the markets uh, are offering <laughs> that safe food? Uh, well, uh, there is a problem sometimes in the infrastructure uh, of, of these markets. So, so um, availability of fresh water, uh, uh, the uh, safe disposal of waste, for example. An important thing is the separation of the different areas of markets, what we call the zoning. So uh, the uh, fruit and vegetables uh, should be separated from the part selling animal products. Uh, the uh, meat should be separate uh, from, uh, from the live, and we shouldn't really have uh, the killing of the animals within uh, the market. So all this separation is important. And then, of course, uh, the hygiene uh, that is practiced by the vendors themselves, uh, uh, personal hygiene 
of the of the vendors and and continuous hygiene and and uh, disinfection of the surfaces which are used uh, for for the uh, sales and the preparation of the food thank you francesco keep your questions coming in uh, while you're asking your questions we have a short clip here to illustrate how important uh, vendors are in selling you food and ensuring that what you're eating is safe have a question here that's come in from LinkedIn from one of our viewers in the UK. They've asked, are baked goods from cafes that have recently opened here safe to consume? How likely is it that coronavirus could be contracted from these baked goods, for example, if they've not been covered? Well, something we have to say really clear, it's not possible to get coronavirus from food. Uh, coronavirus is transmitted from human to humans and, you know, uh, we've been discussing this a lot uh, with the sneezing, with un unclean uh, hands, uh, uh, so it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't get transmitted uh, uh, from from the food. Having said this, we're also recommending that uh, uh, people do not have access to uh, products uh, such as uh, from salad bars or from 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 bakery. That's sort of a, a general rule uh, uh, of hygiene, but people can safely consume food, it's not transmitted neither from the food nor from the packaging. Uh, uh, the production of the food, as we heard from Sarah, needs to ensure that it's uh, is safely produced and that uh, all food workers uh, uh, are protected uh, from uh, getting the coronavirus infection. But we don't get uh, the, the COVID uh, infection from food. We have another question from Facebook here from Franklin Kosiko Kuchu Kane, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, who asks, what are the guidelines for those selling foods in markets? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, as uh, um, I said, e hygiene. So um, personal hygiene, um, washing hands, using uh, hand sanitizers. Uh, using personal protection equipment because they will be often uh, in uh, contact uh, with the public. They will have to uh, use gloves. Uh, they will have to uh, safely dispose of the gloves and wash their hands when, uh, when they change gloves. They will have to clean the surfaces uh, uh, often uh, with sanitizers. Uh, and of course, if they have any symptoms uh, uh, they will not have to be there, they will have to um, um, stay home. Um, so uh, this is uh, for, let's say, uh, open markets, but we have uh, a lot of uh, supermarkets where there's a problem of, you know, many people going to do the shopping, and then the setup of those uh, um, centers will have to be designed appropriately to ensure hygiene and physical distancing. So, you know, having queue control systems, uh, having uh, distancing uh, um, from, uh, um, between the different people and you know, with marks on the ground, uh, having uh, uh, wipers to clean the handles uh, of, the, of the trolleys, uh, uh, and of course uh, asking people to use sanitizer when, when they um, enter uh, these uh, facilities. Uh, you know, this, is a, this is a very good way to protect both the workers and the clients. Our viewer, Danielle Eisenberg Jablon on Facebook has asked, as a consumer, how can I tell if the food that I bring home to my family is safe? Well, uh, the, the food which is uh, manufactured and packaged uh, will have uh, expiry dates. Uh, and uh, so that's an important uh, thing to, to check. 
uh, the food which is fresh will be uh, sold in certain facilities uh, that, uh, first of all, need to have uh, the uh, adequate setup. Uh, we also uh, trust uh, the facilities which are regularly controlled, and you know, in a market you have uh, uh, certain regulations and certain inspections regularly controlled. This kind of uh, inspection have also been going on in critical times like that. So, so we need to trust the authorities that uh, ensure that those facilities uh, provide uh, uh, provide good food. Uh, but uh, I think uh, you can yourself see whether a, a certain uh, place uh, is handled properly with, uh, with adequate hygiene. In some countries, uh, there's a very interesting system. So we have uh, uh, marks uh, on the doors of the, uh, of the facility selling uh, food. Uh, and you know, this is done by the inspectors who, who, who uh, for example, in Denmark, they have what they call the smile system. So you have a nice smile on the door when, when the, you know, the, the food con inspector is gone and uh, he has uh, found uh, no problem. So trust the authorities and yourself look at uh, the use of the basic uh, 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 hygiene rules in the facility. We have another question from our Facebook viewer, AJ Jane, who asks, how should we sanitize our fruits and vegetables? Or just use water. Use fresh water. Of course, it has to be clean water, but you know, a good, a good clean with uh, with fresh water is is absolutely sufficient. So we don't need any kind of detergents or sanitizers. We can just put no. them in fresh water in the sink, for example, and Correct. give them. You use it. You put it in fresh water, clean uh, adequately, and and that's enough. You can you can eat uh, uh, that fruit raw. An interesting question coming in from LinkedIn who asks, who should be taking the lead in exercising health caution or food safety, the seller or the buyer? Ha, ha. We say uh, food safety is everybody's business, or so both. Uh, certainly the seller has responsibilities, also legal responsibilities, by the way. Uh, but the buyer also has a responsibility to make sure that uh, uh, those rules uh, are... are um, Followed, but then you know the the uh, food safety uh, doesn't end at the point of purchase. You you will bring the food home, and you have to continue uh, handling it uh, safely. But I would say that consumers also have uh, a role to play because they have to speak up. There's a lot of very interesting consumers group and consumers uh, organization who are calling for adequate. Uh, uh, regulations uh, and, and enforcement of those regulations, that, that's, a, that's a very important element. We all have the right to uh, have uh, access to safe and healthy foods. Uh, one more question that's come in is, uh, what will be the changes in food safety management with the new COVID measures? So when it comes to the food in our markets, for example, or our supermarkets, have we seen changes or should there be any changes that are happening? Well, the, the changes uh, are um, in the uh, continuous uh, hygiene uh, that should be practiced uh, by, by the food handlers, uh, particularly. Uh, the COVID has actually rather posed a challenge in the production of food uh, because, you know, uh, transport has been more difficult because of trade barriers uh, uh, or even food uh, transporters have been... Uh, uh, exposed more, so there's been a lot of uh, complex uh, steps to, that have been added, but the food itself uh, has been uh, uh, absolutely fine. Uh, hygiene of vendors, hygiene uh, of uh, clients uh, buying the food, those are the things we have to do, but otherwise uh, there's no uh, special um, provisions. Uh, WHO has uh, put out together with FAO, guidance for food operators uh, throughout uh, the food chain uh, that explains uh, what uh, needs uh, to be done, uh, particularly to protect the workers, uh, I would say. And also has put uh, up gu guidance for governments and regulators uh, to ensure that uh, the, the systems of inspections go on despite the complexity of the situation. And, you know, there could be some... Um, of course, uh, uh, problems in having adequate number of staff performing the controls, but you know we've somehow given some uh, uh, some suggestions on on how to uh, do that uh, uh, to, and, and maintain 
the, 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 the food safety and the trust that people have to have in, in, the, in the system of inspections. A question from LinkedIn, which I think many people out there are, are, are considering is, is it necessary to sanitize the food that we buy when we go out before, and the packaging before we put them away in our storage, in our house, in our cupboards, for example? Uh, not particularly. I mean, I think we, we say in general that, you know, for example, if, if you use your shopping bag, that, you know, you, you better clean it before. Um, but otherwise, no, we, we know that uh, actually the, the virus stays more on metal surfaces than on cardboard or, 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 or plastics. Uh, so, you know, perhaps, you know, it, it general uh, rules about, uh, about cleanliness, uh, but not, no specific additional rules are certainly not uh, needed uh, to, to sanitize specifically the, the packaging. Francesca, before we wrap up, I'd like to ask you just to explain a little bit, how do WHO and FAO work to ensure food safety? Well, we work at different levels. First of all, in the, in the, uh, in the protection, in the, in the prevention, uh, then in the early detection, and then in the response, so at different stages. We develop the guidance uh, that uh, scientific-based uh, that then informs the regulations of countries to the Codex Alimentarius Commission. Um, we uh, create networks of institutions to immediately spread the information about uh, uh, foodborne disease outbreaks, what we call the InfoSan, extremely efficient. It works uh, as a matter of uh, hours uh, as part of the international health regulations. We have specific projects uh, to help countries set up uh, food control systems uh, that are uh, efficient. Um, so uh, the collaboration between FAO, WHO, also often with other organizations such as the Organization of Animal Health to ensure that we, um, that we uh, have uh, uh, good health uh, throughout uh, the food chain is important. We're, we're going to have really a, a food system approach and, and working with all other organizations and actors that are responsible to uh, produce, uh, distribute uh, food uh, on our tables. Thank you so much for answering our viewers' questions today, Francesco. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for, but just to let you know, we've had viewers linked in from around the world. Uh, we've had, for example, from Ghana, Cameroon, Australia, USA, uh, Greece, Indonesia, Spain, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, India, Turkey, Vietnam, Philippines, France, Nepal, Thailand, Canada. I have a list, it goes on and on. So thank you so much all for joining us from all corners of the globe. If we didn't get to your questions, please keep them in the comments section. We'll try our best to get our experts to answer those questions after this Facebook Live. I'd also like to say thank you again to Dr. Sarah Cahill who joined us earlier. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Francesco, for joining us. Um, I just also would like to say thank you all to you, to, for sending in your questions and for taking an interest in food safety. It's such an important topic. And I'd like to wish you all for Sunday the 7th a happy World Food Safety Day.